Now there are some new features in the latest update of Lightroom Classic, and I've zeroed in on three that I think are worth learning how to use. Lightroom Classic, new features, coming up. Hi, I'm Terry Vanderheiden, professional photographer, and today we're gonna to work with a few of the new features released in the latest version of Lightroom Classic. While there were about 15 new features added, at least that's what they call them, new features, but a lot of them were improvements, I've narrowed it down to the three that I think you might want to consider using, or at least understand how to use. Last week, I released a video on how to use the AI-assisted culling feature. While I think that feature is interesting, it's not counting towards the three that we're going to look at today. You can check out that video. I'll leave a link up here, as well as I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, as with most of my tutorials on software, I've included a link to most of the image I'll be working on today. If you're a subscriber to my mailing list, you already have access to those images. So you can work alongside me because I already sent them to you in advance. What? You want to be on that advanced list too? Well, go to my website, imagelight.com and hit subscribe and fill out the form and sign up for free. I don't send a lot of junk, mostly just notices of when I release a new video. And if it's a tutorial, I'll send the images ahead of time so you can follow along with me. So let's jump into Lightroom Classic and I'll show you how these new features work. As the holidays are fast approaching, you might be looking for a nice gift to give a photographer on your list. Might I suggest my book, Razor Sharp Nature Photography. This ebook takes you through the steps of getting the sharpest images possible right out of the camera. I take you through several ways you can improve your sharpness in your images, as well as teaching a little bit about my post-processing for sharpening. One of the cool things is that it's an instantly downloadable ebook that can be enjoyed on your tablet or your phone, or you can access it while you're out in the field shooting. Since it's instantly downloadable, you can do what I do and wait till the last minute and that you can still have time for gift giving. It's only available on my website, imagelight.com under digital products page. Check it out if you like. We're inside a Lightroom Classic. And let me just show you here, if we go up here, go to about Lightroom Classic, we can see it's release 15.0. And if we go to the, the, the first feature is a remove feature. So let's go into develop. And what they've done, it's not new, they've improved this. And this is under remove. So that's this third icon over. That's it looks like a little eraser, the remove tool. We click on the remove tool down here because of course we have three options to choose from. Let's click on this one. And in the past, we've had used generative AI to, to fix this. So what we've got is a guy walking along here. Let's go ahead and make our, bra our brush a little bit bigger. I use the bracket keys, left and right bracket keys. will make it bigger or smaller. So let's say, and we'll draw around this guy and we'll let AI think about it. So let's go ahead and hit remove. It's going to think, okay, what's the best way to remove this? And so it removes that, uh, that guy, which is, and it actually did a pretty decent job, but of course it left its shadow, right? Now, in some cases that shadow is going to fool AI and it's going to say, oh, wait, there needs to be something there. And so then the AI generator is going to put a potted plant or something there. So this is how they fix that. So in this new version of it, they've added this detect objects. So when we come in here and we select our subject again, just like we did before, it will also select the shadow that goes with it. So AI is looking at the man and saying, oh wow, he's casting a shadow. You wanna remove that as well. And in this case we do. So let's go ahead and hit remove. It'll look through. And of course it always gives us three versions. We can click through the versions here to see what we like. If we come over into the image, you can always see the little outline drawing of what actually is being removed. But as we come over here, we don't have to look at that. So you can find this, the one that looks the best, and that of course looks great. So you don't have to think about the shadows. You don't have to think quite as detailed. It, 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 it's gonna do some of that work for you. So it really speeds up the process of, of totally removing something from an image. So that's in the remove tool, and that's clicking on detect objects. Also in the remove tool is a new section on cleaning up dust. So let's cruise down here just a little bit. Of course, they've added a new thing on reflections. 
it's not quite there yet in my opinion but you can certainly try that but if we come over here to dust and we do this downward arrow we can see that it reveals a new dialog box and what it does is it goes in and looks for dust so let's see we can see this is an older scanned image so there's lots of dust to deal with and let's go ahead and hit apply and of course Lightroom's going to go through and say, hey, where is all the dust? Let's go ahead and fix it. And you can see the points of dust that it, it chose to, to eliminate. And then it just basically removes it. So let's zoom up here just a little bit. And we can see that while it, it removed some dust, it didn't remove all of the dust. So again, there's no, there's no scale on this as to how far you want to do the dust removal but it does give you a good start and i think I, I think down the road it's going to get to a point where we'll be able to tell it to remove more dust is my guess so but the easy way to do this is they've added this thing called visualize spots and this has been in other iterations of lightroom classic but here it's nice and handy and right here and watch what it does right when we slide this over we can see that it reveals those spots that need removing so we can simply go in, zoom up a little bit, and again, our bracket key will change the size of this brush, or if you want to change it here, you can do it there too. But then you just go around and click, 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 and keep going until you've clicked on all of the dust spots that you want to remove. And this is actually pretty good because let's say, for instance, there was a bird in the sky or something that you didn't want removed that's something where you would really like the ability to go in and do it on your own. I'll show you another one here. Another scanned image, lots of dust. Look at this dust. So let's go ahead and click on apply. Let it go through and look for all the dust. And we'll see here, I'm gonna turn this off, see what we did. And better yet, when we pull over here, we can see all those little bubbles are showing you where it actually did eliminate some dust. Again, you can go in with your brush tool. Let's make sure we got a brush big enough to take out this hair. And we can make it smaller. You'd only want the brush as large as you need. You don't want to be going overboard on it. So typically what I'll do is I'll just have one hand on the bracket key and then move the mouse around until I get to the point where I like it. If I need to get something bigger, I can make it a bigger brush. If I need to make it smaller, I can make it smaller. So you can see all of the dust that it removed. You did some of it, but it did a pretty good job. And of course, if you want to visualize dust, you can see more of the dust spots that are on there. And as you pull over here, you can see what exactly uh, Lightroom accomplished. So here's one that we missed. Let's undo that. Let's make the brush size a little bit bigger to cover that. And we can turn that off. And you can see it's a much cleaner image. Going through and cleaning your images, especially if they're old scanned images or if you happen to have dust on the sensor, it's not the end of the world. Lightroom does some of that work for you. So here's yet another image that has some dust issues. It's a scanned image. So let's go ahead and zoom up. We can see here that there's all kinds of things in the sky, almost like a uh, maybe a fingerprint or something was on that on that file. So let's go to remove. Let's go to dust removal. Click apply. And we'll see what Lightroom is probably going to have all kinds of dust spots that it's going to find on this one. So you can see all those dots that it picked up, tons and tons of dots, but it didn't do anything about this, all this business here, which is, looks like a fingerprint, these streaks. So how do you want to go about it? Let's say we make a giant brush and we click on that. Let's see, it's going to remove that. Let's overlap it. Click there, there. Now we've accomplished some of them. We can also go into our favorite little tool of the visualize spots and see all of the dust that was, there's even tons more that we missed. I mean, this thing's riddled. So I think this distraction removal of the dust is actually a pretty good thing. 
One thing that a lot of people don't realize is let's say you had an image and you had similar ones. And of course, if you have dust on your dust on your sensor, it, the dust is going to be in the exact same spot every time. So what you can do is you can come over here and let's say the, the, we'll just pretend that that's a similar image and we're going to hit sync. When it comes up here, check this out. Under remove, you got the ability to do dust. And what happens is that will go through and take out the dust it did on the first one and match it to all the other ones. So that's a pretty cool way to kind of batch fix a dust issue that you might be having on your sensor. Let me know in the comments what your favorite new feature in Lightroom Classic is. Now I read and respond to all the comments and yes, it's me. It's not an AI bot working with the comments. So if you have questions or feedback, let me know. And take a second to click that like button. It helps this video get seen by more people and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done it. Let's get back to it. Let me show you my favorite feature that Lightroom came out with. All right, so this is arguably one of my favorite tools inside of the new feature of Lightroom Classic, and it's called Variance. So let's come in here. We got to do a, jump through a couple of hoops first. Let's go ahead and pick an image. We're going to come into Basic. And we're going to go to Color Mixer, and we're going to go to Point Color. And when we're in Point Color, we have these sliders here that are available to us. So these sliders work with whatever tone you're working with. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our eyedropper tool and we'll grab some skin tone. And that's going to be the color that we're going to work with. Let's bring this little triangle down so we can see exactly the color we chose. So depending on where you put your eyedropper, it's going to grab a different color, right? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a color that we want everything to be balanced to. These sliders have already been in Lightroom, and that's where if you want to change the hue of something or saturate or unsaturate that tone, it's that tone in particular. And if you, anytime you do and you're messing around with these sliders, you want to get them back to zero, just double click the word and you're back. We use the eyedropper tool to pick this particular color. And what we're going to do with variance is let's say we want that variance to be much more in line with the tone that we picked with the with the picker so as we slide this over watch what happens let's go ahead and get this zoomed up a little bit we slide this over we can see that the skin starts evening out if we go to the opposite side it becomes more contrasty 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 um, so you can see this gives us a really good variance. And when you're using a mask, we're only affecting the skin. So it's a way that you can soften somebody's skin. Okay, here's another example. Go into masks, grab our people, let it pick out facial skin and body skin, and we'll leave the rest unchecked. And we're gonna create a mask. And inside of here, we're going to go down to point color, grab a color that we like, see how it target it on that screen there. And we go down to our variants and we can slide this over and soften some of the skin tones. See if we bring it over here, we can make it more harsh, but as we soften it, we bring it over to the left, we can actually soften it. So let's take a look at what that looks like within, with and without. That's before, that's after. So if you've got shine or things like that, it can really do a pretty quick way of fixing that sort of thing. So as a nature photographer and wildlife photographer, I try to adapt these types of things that the features that uh, Lightroom comes out with, how is it gonna affect us? Now, it, it, we're not working with skin tones all the time. We have other things we have to worry about. So as an example, take a look at this image. We've got a sky that's behind this pelican and you can see here that it's a little darker on the edges than it is around in the center. So let's go on over to Color Mixer, grab our point color, grab our eyedropper tool, and let's click on, oh, the darker edge of this tone of the back of the sky. You can see where it targeted it on this color screen. And then we come down to variance, and if we slide this over to the left, watch what it does. It just evened out that entire sky. So there's before and there's after it evened out that sky. So this, I looked at this and I thought, wow, this is pretty useful. You know, a lot of times if you use a polarizer or something like that, you're gonna get some awkward skies. This can help you fix that fairly rapidly. All right, let's take a look at another image here. 
we have this dog in the field here. Let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's just do a little cropping first off. So we'll get this a little closer up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same routine. We're going to go over to Color Mixer, grab our point color, grab our eyedropper tool, click on some of the grass, and let's go ahead and take a look. Now we can even this out by softening it this way, but that's not what we want to do in this case. Let's go the opposite direction. There, we can start creating more detail, more contrast in the image itself. Now, unfortunately here, you can see by looking at the dog, we've created a, an opposite variance even in the colors of the dog. So let's go ahead and zero that back out. We're gonna go up to our masking tool, grab our background, it'll select everything but the subject. Select a little bit of the bird, but that's all right. It's not gonna be a problem here. Come down here to our point color, click on this. And now what we're gonna do is slide this over and get more contrast out of that image. So if we look at the before and after, We've created more contrast in that image. And so we can also, since we're in here, if we want to saturate the grasses as well, we can do that. You can see our before and after. And the, and the variance will help us keep that contrast that we didn't have originally. So this is a pretty good tool for our nature photography. Let's do it one more time over here. We'll see this image here. Now we've got this squirrel up here. And of course the background's a little different, but let's go ahead and just for kicks, let's go ahead and see what it looks like on just dealing with the entire image. So if we clicked, uh, say in this blue here, and we slid the variance over, we could soften that background so it's all pretty even. If we went the other way, then you could start seeing the things that are reflected in the background. But it's a pretty simple way to soften that background. Now let's take it a step further. Let's go in here, create a mask, and we'll do our subject. Subject should be the squirrel, it is. So let's go ahead and grab our point color, and let's just grab a tone of the squirrel. And now we can look at our variance. And now if we slide it to the left, it fades it out. If we slide it to the right, it creates a whole bunch more contrast. So depending on the look that you're going for, it's a way that you can actually change things fairly quickly. So if we just tap on this, you can see what we've done, right? We've done some improvements on this image and it only took the movement of just a simple slider. So I think this is a uh, opportunity to take your images and go in and always check the variance and see if you can improve your image either by adding a mask or doing it straight to the whole image. You probably can improve your images by this one little slider. So I think that's pretty cool. All right, we'll see you next time.